Here are a couple of examples for the lab on forces and what you're supposed to do. Let's first look at some of the instructions. It says for all setups do the following. Identify and label Newton's the force vector shown in the diagram. Add the forces, either computer or graphically. Determine the net force in its direction. Determine the acceleration in its direction. Comment on what will happen next to the object. So we're going to look at a couple of setups and I will go through these that I just mentioned. So here's the one that I want to cover. The same Cessna 150 of mass 600 kilograms flies with a horizontal speed of 110 miles per hour, about 50 meters per second, gaining altitude at a rate of 2 meters per second. So this is the setup. Here there are apparently four forces acting on the airplane. The one to the right is apparently the thrust. The one up must be the lift. The one to the left must be drag. And the one down must be weight. And let's see how long they are. I put these rulers on here. One, two, three, four, and so on. And it says here the scale is one square equals 1,000 newtons. So here we have 1,000 newtons. Here we have one, two, three, four thousand newtons. Here we have half a square, so 500 newtons. And then pull this in here. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, and a couple of half squares, so 6,000 newtons. And that's what I'm going to write in here. To the right, there was the thrust at 1,000 newtons, drag or air resistance at 500 newtons. This one here was the lift at 4,000. And this one is, of course, the weight at 6,000 newtons. Now we're supposed to figure out what the net force is, and there are three ways of doing this. I will show you all three so that you have a choice for the other setups. First, simply add them graphically. So I'm, for example, going to grab the weight, which says 6,000 newtons, and so you would imagine yourself as drawing this yourself just the way I do it, so 6,000 newtons. Now I'm going to take the thrust at 1,000 newtons and I put them tip to tail. Then I take the lift at 4,000 newtons and I put it tip to tail. And then I take the drag at 500 newtons and I put it tip to tail. Notice that I drew, drew this rather quickly and depending I could be pretty accurate or a little bit less accurate in this case for example this error is slightly high um, but when you do this graphically yeah there could be a little bit of inaccuracy um, the net force then is from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the last vector. So that is the net force and what I would write on here now is that the net force is down two squares half to the to the right, I could take an estimate and say here, well, probably a little bit more than 2,000 newtons. And I'm just estimating 2,200 newtons. You know, as as I'm as as, as you're estimating, um, 
you're going to be relatively close if you write down here as an estimate 5,000 newtons. That's obviously wrong, but in the neighborhood of what it should be. So 2,200 newtons, and that is to the lower right. The acceleration is in the same direction to the lower right, and you get that from having watched one of my mini lectures on the force and acceleration vectors. And now to calculate the acceleration, well, it's 2200 divided by the 600 kilograms that was given in the original setup, so 2200 divided, 2200 newtons divided by 400 kilograms. Oops, I said 600 kilograms, right? 600 kilograms comes out to around it 4 meters per second squared. Again, you may round your, in this case, to just one significant figure after all. That's what I used to, one significant figure, which means actually I could have also just written 2,000 newtons. Okay, any case, yeah, this one here was supposed to be 600. So those are the numbers I'm going to write in here 22, uh, 2200 to the lower. Right, and the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared. And then I just noticed that that was supposed to go here. There we go. Okay, and now what happens next to the airplane? Well, it flies to the right and it still has some acceleration to the right so that means it's getting faster now it also has obviously an acceleration down now that does not mean that the airplane is going down I have to look at what is it doing right now well it's gaining altitude at a rate of 2 meters per second which means it's going up but with an acceleration pointing down as it's going up that velocity up is decreasing so it's still gaining altitude but the vertical speed decreases and that's what I try to explain in that mini lecture on what force and acceleration vectors mean to the change of velocity.